These are the official speaker's yes. robes that are worn on ceremonial occasions and in particular on Tinwald Day. Uh, they were a gift uh, to the Speaker of the House of Keys um, 50 years ago in 1966 from the British government and they were gifted to Sir Charles Carouche whose portrait uh, adorns the wall there and he received them from the then House of Commons Speaker, Dr Horace King, who was actually the uh, official principal guest on Tinwell Day of that year. And the reason for that was that it was the 100th anniversary of the Isle of Man Election Act when we had the first popular elections to the House of Keys in the Isle of Man, 1866, 150 years ago. Now, the, the robes are modelled on the robes of the Speaker of the House of Commons, and indeed many speakers in the Commonwealth have very, very similar robes. Key difference, of course, in, in our case, is the, uh, the wonderful three legs of uh, man and the, the red shield. Um, but in Commonwealth speakers' conferences, Caribbean and the African speakers in particular have retained the robes in modern times. A lot of other countries have dispensed with them altogether. The very, very important part of our history. Now, speakers of the House of Keys didn't always have robes. Until 1920, the speakers uh, wore court dress or military uniform. But it was decided by the House of Keys in 1920 that the, the speaker ought to have a set of official robes. And the speaker at that time was Sir George Frederick Clucas, and the robes that were adopted was uh, uh, a black robe and the full bottom wig. So Sir, Sir George Frederick Clucas was the first speaker actually to wear the wig, and when he died in 1937, um, his family gifted it to his successor, Sir Joseph Qualtro. So from 1920 onwards, um, the speakers uh, whether presiding in here or on Tinwald Hill, would wear the full bottom wig and black robe. 1966, uh, the more ornate official robes gifted by the British government to the House of Keys, and they have been worn ever since in Tinwald Hill. Um, at regular uh, sittings of the House, the black robe continues to be worn. So 1866 was a very important uh, year in Manx history. It's really only 150 years. We've had democracy in the Isle of Man. We've had certainly a thousand years of parliamentary uh, governance, but true democracy only started in 1866. And I say started because it was only uh, property owning uh, males who had the vote in those days. Uh, the vote for women arrived in 1881 and we were the first national uh, parliament in the world to give women the vote but even then it was only property owning women and the the reason uh, we waited till 1866 um, was i think largely to do with the fact that the capital had recently moved from castletown uh, to douglas and the governor of the day, Governor Loch, was very keen. Uh, he was quite progressive in his thinking, and he saw that Douglas needed uh, a landing stage to cope with the growing visitor industry uh, in, of the 19th century. And if Douglas was to be the capital, it, it needed good harbour and port facilities. Now, to build these costs money, and there was no way that an unelected House of Keys, self-appointed old boys club was going to be allowed by the imperial government in London to uh, raise money uh, for very worthwhile local purposes unless it was democratically elected. So Westminster passed a, 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 an act and the Tinwald passed the Act, the Isle of Man Elections Act uh, in 1866 with the first popular elections being held in March of 1867. So um, it's that period of history that, that we are remembering and of course it wasn't just having an enlightened governor at the time, there was 
quite a bit of popular resentment about the self-perpetuating nature of the keys, totally undemocratic, and um, the editor of the Isle of Man uh, Times of the day, Jane One James Brown, who was a publisher, um, <coughs> uh, was at the forefront, um, along with Farger, uh, of uh, popular protest. And I think it, it was too much when the Keys referred to Douglas Town co councillors as donkeys uh, for wanting to introduce bylaws uh, in, in Douglas that uh, the Keys took it upon themselves to fine uh, Brown for contempt, invoking long-standing judicial powers, and he was sent to prison. This was overturned by uh, the, the Privy Council in London. They weren't going to stand uh, for this, and uh, in fact, members of the House of Keys who uh, had imposed the sentence um, were uh, in, in turn uh, had to pay his costs or his fines uh, on his behalf. The need for reform in the Isle of Man was very, very strong at that time as the economy was growing and the uh, requirements of, um, uh, for tax raising powers was growing in the mid 19th century that it was quite natural that the Keys should be properly democratically elected.